could Stellantis have too much inventory? Could they have more than a 600 day supply for most of their products? That's about what the industry was guessing before what's gone down here in the last 24 hours. Roll the intro. So the following video comes from uh, a news station in Detroit that is now exposing how much extra inventory they have. Not just the inventory sitting on lots that put them at a almost 600 day supply. There's so much city on lots in Detroit, they might have a two and a half year supply of trucks, of SUVs. I just, I don't see how any of this is good, but don't take my word. Check out this clip from the news. Profits have soared since the end of the pandemic. The highest sales, the highest monthly payment rates ever recorded as inventory stayed low. But as we all well know, around here, the business can change on a dime. Local 4 Business Editor Rob Maloney has a look at how Stellantis is now forced to cope with having too much inventory. Over the last few years for the auto companies, they've been able to get away with high transaction prices, big profits, and very few incentives. But while nobody was looking, the market changed on everybody. And now Stellantis is sitting on a bloated inventory that they could easily sell a year ago. It's not difficult to find a lot of Stellantis vehicles baking in the sun. This is the Sterling Heights assembly plant where they have dozens upon dozens of highly priced pickups sitting unshipped and unsold. Dealerships have big inventories too, good if you have a particular vehicle with specific goodies you want, but if you can't afford any of those choices, not so good for the company, says Ivan Drury from Edmonds Automotive. Is the interest rates kicked in and it's like, look, now these vehicle payments are they're not touchable. You might even get denied for a loan or you think, you know, I cannot pay over $1,000 a month when I'm just trying to go from point A to point B. He says the time a Stellantis vehicle sits on a lot is about 100 days when the industry average is about 50. And the sweet spot price is at about $30,000, Stellantis having one vehicle below that. Cops auto analyst Aaron Keating adding. They're about 120, 125% above the average uh, transaction price right now. Which could mean a big break if you're in the market and hoping for a sale. If I'm a consumer out there, Memorial Day is coming up. I'm thinking my dealers are likely wanting to work with some incentives to maybe offload some of that older inventory. And Stellantis is saying in a statement, quote, our incentive strategies remain aggressive and focused on regional opportunities. New retail strategies provide additional flexibility for our dealers to focus offers where they think they can maximize sales and address older inventory, end quote. Now, Stellantis also saying they are, in fact, going to be dropping prices on certain vehicles, like they're saying uh, the, uh, the the Jeep Grand Cherokee and the Durango. They're going to have a lower by $4,000 starting price, depending on the model. The Ram 2500 and 3500 heavy-duty vehicles, the 2024 models, they're going to have $9,000 off. The Pacifica, the, uh, the hybrid and the EV, uh, will have uh, $2,660 off, and then a couple of thousand dollars off of some of the gas model Pacifica. So uh, it does look like there is a sale coming. Back to you. Okay, Rod, thank you. Maybe a fire sale. So as you can see, things are not all warm and rosy up there in Detroit for Stellantis, and they can try to cost, uh, cut cost and save money by continually to fire Americans or skirt around their contract with the UAW, which I think they've probably broken multiple times now, but we'll get to that in a video later today probably but I, I can tell you this I don't see how any of this ends well for Stellantis oh and before you eh, TK's just hating on Stellantis he just hates on Dodge no I'm hating on companies that do scumbag behavior 
And it's now it makes so much sense on why the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealerships do all of this bogus shit because the company does bogus shit. And what I mean by that is they intentionally violate their contracts with the union. They uh, lay off Americans that were getting paid X amount of dollars, like their engineers, to hire them in a different country that they pay a quarter of the salary for. Now, I know you say, it's good business, TK, it's free market. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, I get it. But they're also the engineers that are causing the same problems that we're seeing now. Do you think it's a coincidence that you're seeing... Edmonds long-term review breakdown for the third time uh the Jeep Grand Cherokee L like if you bought one of those right now you might be missing chromosomes in fact if you bought one of those right now you probably have an IQ under 50 this does not look good for Stellantis I, there's there's no way you can make this rosy and look good. And even as the news said that they're cutting the prices of the cars by four grand, it's not enough because the dealers are going to continue to do their Mickey Mouse bullshit. And if the company is doing bullshit, the dealers are going to do bullshit. And that $4,000, you cut off the sticker, man, the dealers will figure out how to add that back. There's not a ton of incentives, all that stuff. You heard all of it yourself. I'm not saying it. The news in Detroit is covering it now. The most, let me just make this clearer for you. The most car-friendly news in all of the country is shitting on Stellantis. Why? Because they continue to screw people. And I think, you know... We've seen some executives here retire and resign who were here for American brands. And I think you're going to see that continue. I think you're going to see a rapid decline. And here's the thing. You know, I'm always the guy that likes to put my money where my mouth is. And I've done that before. I, short, I shorted Carvana's stock when they were up over 260 bucks, And I shorted them. <laughs> and I consistently kept re-upping and continue to short them all the way down to 20 bucks. And I probably could have took them where they went all the way down under 10. But I made a lot of money off of that. And I think I'm going to make a lot of money off of shorting Stellantis. Now, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just saying the writing is on the wall. Anybody that's in the car industry or car business can see this. And it's not just... Stellantis. Ford's got some problems too, but they're not like Stellantis. Stellantis has some severe problems coming up next year in the American market. And they are ripe, ripe for their stock to eat dog shit. And I mean, down. Because I think, and I, and I don't know the future, but I think there's going to be some major changes around January of next year. And I think that all of the EPA bullshit and ratings and what they need to have for cars are going to go out the damn window. And I think we're going to get back to making cars that Americans want. But who am I? I'm just a third-rate YouTuber, right? That's what we hear in the comments. You're a third-rate YouTuber. You don't know anything. Yet we consistently say things over and over and over and over again that continue to be right. Shocker. Hmm. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Make sure to give the video a big thumbs up if you like what I do. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one.